little cautious. I don't want to crash because no prop guards, and I didn't bring any spare props today. Oop. That's a trick. We're good. We're good. Fly back. So a couple months ago, I started flying FPV quadcopters. And one of the cool things about the hobby is you can build them from scratch. And this right here is an Odonata HD. It uses two inch propellers. It's got a little camera on it. It allows you to see what it sees as you fly around. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I turn this raw sheet of carbon fiber into this flying quadcopter in an afternoon. So let's get started. So first things first, this is not gonna be a full in-depth tutorial on how to build one of these. If you wanna know how to build a full quadcopter from scratch, go look up Joshua Bardwell. He knows a lot more about it than me and he's a much better teacher when it comes to quadcopters. I may know 3D printing, but I've only been doing this stuff for a couple weeks now. So one of the cool things about the Odinata design is it is an open source design. While you can purchase pre-assembled ready to fly units, you can purchase the frame pre-cut, I went the full DIY route. I downloaded the DXF files for the frame. I cut the frame myself. I used leftover components that I had on hand along with a few purchases. And I built this whole quadcopter up from scratch in an afternoon and I was out flying at 1 a.m. in my front yard just to make sure it works before taking it to a field for a proper first flight. So let's head over to the bench and start building this thing. So let's begin with the hardware we're gonna be using for this build. And the beauty of an open source DIY quadcopter build is you can use pretty much any hardware you want. And I'm gonna be reusing a lot of components from some previous builds uh, to save a little bit of money and reuse some stuff that I already have on hand. So starting off, the AIO that we're gonna be using for this build is the Beta FPV F4 AIO 12 amp. Uh, this is the V2 version. One thing I've done is I've removed the motor connectors here because I'm gonna be direct soldering the motors, save a little bit of weight and room. We're gonna be pairing that up with some Beta FPV 1103 8,000 kilovolt motors. Uh, both of these were originally on a Beta FPV 75X uh, DJI HD quadcopter that I had that I ended up taking apart because I really didn't like how it flew. So I ended up repurposing it using the naked Vista and camera on a Flywoo Explorer LR4, giving that some HD long range capabilities and we're reusing some of the other hardware for this build. For a camera, we have a Cadex Ant here. We are going analog with this build. Our receiver, we're going Express LRS. And this right here is the Happy Model EP2 receiver. And see that itty bitty tower right on that PCB? That is our antenna. So this is all we need for the receiver. Our VTX, as I said, we're going analog. This is probably gonna be the weakest point of this build. Again, we're using old stuff. This is a VTX out of an HGLRC XJV145 uh, that I ripped the UFL connection off of. So this antenna is directly soldered to the board with a little bit of E6000 for uh, strain relief and it should work. I've bench tested it, it still does work. Although the fact that it is battery powered from seven to 24 volts, and I may wanna run this on 2S, um, might cause some trouble down the line. So we may end up swapping this out later. We also have some props here. Uh, these are some Gemfan 2023, three bladed props. We have our frame, and this is the Odonta HD frame. And this one, I actually cut myself. The original plan was to cut it out of acrylic on my Congro Robo CNC, little 3018 style desktop CNC. But after doing some spindle upgrades and just, you know, seeing if we could cut carbon fiber, what do you know? It, it, it cuts it pretty well. And this is two millimeter thick carbon fiber that both halves are machined out of. And of course, we're also gonna have to have some connectors, some wires, we have some standoffs, some printed TPU parts, along with some screws, washers, and other assorted components. So, so let's get to building. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is with these motors, unfortunately, these wires are ever so slightly too short. So I'm gonna be direct soldering these. I need a little bit of room uh, to solder them correctly and get some clean wire routing and these are too short. So I'm gonna to have to cut the connector off and solder on some extensions. So let's start with that. Now, fun thing with silicone wire is with these uh, smaller gauge wires, you can just strip it with your fingers. Now, if you have a pair of third hands, I really like these Omni Fixos here. Uh, if you're somebody like me who kind of shakes a little bit, it makes soldering these a heck of a lot easier. One down, 11 more to go. Extension soldered on and heat shrunk. Okay, so now it's time to solder the motors to the PCB here. Got a little bit of solder here. I use the uh, rosin core. Uh, what is it? 60, 
6337. And then I also have some flux here uh, that we'll put on the pads here just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, flux helps the solder flow. Okay, let's go ahead, get this done. We're gonna solder the pad up, tin the wires, and then we'll saw them together. These are very small pads, so you need to be careful uh, that you don't have any shorts. Now you really wanna make sure that you have no shorts. And unfortunately, because these are motors, you can't just do a, uh, a continuity twist. You really have to inspect these visually and make sure you don't have any shorts. So next thing we're gonna do now, I'm gonna solder on the battery connector and we're gonna install this on the bottom plate of the frame. So now we have the AO mounted, we have our motors mounted, and if you have a smoke stopper, um, now would be a good time to use it, but I don't. And uh, I'm just gonna trust that uh, my soldering is good and we don't let out the blow smoke. So when I plug in the battery, um, we should get some beeps. If you're familiar with FPV, you know what they are and hopefully we don't get any smoke. Okay, and that beeping is it, it's not connecting to the receiver, which we're gonna go ahead and solder on a receiver and a VTX now and add the rest of the uh, components. So it looks like a bit of a mess right now because it kind of is. But uh, the, these, I swear, the, these Omnifix, those are amazing for this kind of stuff. So we have everything that we needed to solder up and attach to this uh, attached. Um, it looks a little bit of a rat's nest right now, and it kind of is. But when it comes to attaching stuff to most of these flight controllers, it, it's UART. Uh, it's, it's most of this stuff, you need a power, a ground, a TX, and an RX. And when you connect TX and RX, you cross them. So TX to RX, RX to TX. We have our receiver wired up to TX RX1. We have our VTX wired up to RX2. And then we have our camera uh, attached to the AIO. It's getting power from it. And then that feeds the signal back to the VTX to be transmitted back. So we get that wonderful OSD display. So now I'm gonna button everything up and we can move on to beta flight and hopefully getting this all set up and hopefully everything works. So as you can see, we have our quadcopter here. I have it plugged in over USB. Uh, Betaflight seen it as you can see it right there. And the first thing I did was since this AIO was used in another build, uh, I went and flashed the newest version of Betaflight and just went to default settings for everything because I was gonna have to change everything to set up for this specific quadcopter build. So in our ports here, we have UART for our receiver set to you. UART1. Uh, UART2 is our video transmitter. Gone ahead. Uh, the only thing I really changed here in configuration was the maximum arm angle to 180 so I can arm it while upside down to turtle mode. Uh, if there's any presets you like using, make sure you set those up. Again, don't use this video as an exact tutorial. There are much better, more in-depth tutorial videos for setting up Betaflight out there. For the PIDs, I am running the stock Betaflight PIDs. I'll adjust these and tune these as I go. And for rates, I'm using my rates, which are the actual rates. Slightly adjusted, there isn't much difference there. Uh, receiver, again, Express LRS, so we are using the Crossfire protocol over UART. Uh, modes, I have my arm switch angle beeper and flip over after crash switch set up. I normally fly in acro mode, but I do like having angle there. If you lose video connection, what you can do is you quickly flip to angle mode and throttle up. This will usually punch you straight up and hopefully get around whatever is blocking your video signal, hopefully prevent you from crashing. And flip over crash is turtle mode. So if you land way out there, upside down, this allows you to flip over and hopefully fly back. It saves you from having to walk out there. Uh, for motors, make sure your motors are ordered correctly and they are spinning in the right direction. Make sure you have your props installed correctly as well and set up your OSD. Again, this is analog, so I don't really run much on my OSD. Basically just my flight time, video link, and my battery level. Since I fly quads with multiple different cell batteries, I just usually run the average cell voltage uh, for my battery meter. And lastly, if you are running analog, uh, make sure your video transmitter is set up. So that is the quick rundown of how I quickly set this up. Let's go fly. And while I take a moment here to get everything packed up to head out to the field, I just wanna thank those that help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do. I would not be able to do this without your continued support and you make this all possible. So if you wanna help support the channel, there's links in the description, affiliate links, they don't cost you anything extra. Go a long way in helping to support the channel. And also, 
you want to support me directly, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon supporter. And while you're at it, don't forget to join the community Discord in the link in the description. Now let's head out to the field. It is an analog, so we are going to be flying it. I've got my DJI goggles. These are the V1s. Analog adapter here. Pick up the old timey signal. And to start off, we're going to be using these GMB 450 milliamp hour batteries. And these are 2S. Now, unfortunately, I live in Canada, which is great, but uh, when winter comes, it gets cold. So this is really like the only nice day for the next couple weeks that I get to fly, and it's already negative five out, I think, right now. But it's sunny, so at least we got the sun. So I got the battery mounted, we're gonna plug it in, and we're gonna go for a little flight around the park here. And this will be the uh, first proper flight that uh, isn't at one in the morning with a half dead battery. Let's go ahead, let's go for a flight. So this has analog, got a 350 milliwatt VTX, got a little uh, Omni antenna. And it's pretty good. Uh, the camera is a Cadex Ant again. And we're at 80 grams roughly, if I remember correctly. That's pretty good. Reminds me a lot of a, a little tiny whoop, but I don't have the guards, so crashing into stuff. Something you kind of really want to avoid. And I don't have patch antennas on my headset. I'm just using two small Omnis. So the video probably isn't the greatest at all times, but it's kind of good everywhere. If I remember correctly, flying out all the way to this corner is about 200, 200, 200 to 250 meters. I haven't really measured it out, but I think it's about 200 meters flying out there. There we go. A little bit of breakup. Crash of that tree. Now there is a hill here. This hill, yeah. Going behind that hill, kind of. Ruins the reception a bit. We can get up pretty high. So let's kill the throttle, see how quickly it falls. And it's not bad. So obviously this thing doesn't have a GPS, so I don't know exactly how high I am. Um, I do have one quad that has that, so I might check that out one day. Turns really nice. And 300 milliamp hour battery, or 450 milliamp hour battery, I don't know if the uh, right there is pretty accurate but turns pretty good just a little cautious i don't want to crash because no prop guards and i didn't bring any spare props today but it actually flies really nice i like this and this again is on uh 2s Oop. that's a trick we're good we're good fly back yeah. it's like driving a car look where you want to go and you will go there. Don't look at what you don't want to hit, because if you look at where you don't want to hit, you'll hit it. Oops. Oh. You know, the free throw is pretty good. That is not bad. That's not quite a power. <laughs> go. Not too shabby. So yeah, not bad for a first flight. 
This did crash into a tree. Nothing broke, props are all good. I say that's successful. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, FPV quadcopters, I've been enjoying a ton over the last little while, so you'll probably see some more content related to that on this channel. If you have any questions, as always, ask them in the comments below. And this isn't the first time I've played with remote controlled things. A couple months ago, I built a death racer and brought it to earth. So if you wanna know how a 3D printed jousting battle tank thing, rock'em sock'em robot fares, here's a video related to that. Take care and cheers.